you went back and looked at your tape in the last one game, what do you think the biggest issues were offensively? What are the things that you have concerns about it and what they do? They do a good job, you know. Like you see some areas where you gotta where you gotta clean up. And a lot of them are just kind of simple things. One guy here, one guy there type of things. But they do they do a great job. Those games are always always ugly and, and, and fought out and it's good to be on this side of them. And is there fairly, fairly easy fixes, you feel? Yeah, I mean, some of the things are just challenging in itself, you know what I mean? Like when, when you could fit an, an extra defender into the box, it's challenging, you know, it's, it's tough. So, so easy fixes, but sometimes, you know, five yards is really good, like it's what you're fighting for, you know, and um, and then some things were easy, easy fixes. You know, some things are just guys you know, being detailed up on the side. Could you explain the guard rotation a little bit? I know all three guys have been playing quite a bit, but is there a certain number of snaps or drives you want them to get, or is it kind of a field thing? I just been going a couple, of, like the first two drives, um, and then they start, start the rotation from there. So it hasn't been too much. Uh, other than that, I think they all can use a little bit of time. I don't think. Uh, Urge has been eating up the majority of the reps. You know, I probably got to get Celts a few more reps in there. So you talked about at the beginning of the year when Van Landen was coming back, but you consider him a starter because all the reps he got. Did he benefit from the fact that he didn't have to play every snap of every game last year because you could depend on Dietzen? So you, you could kind of um, break him in. I think bit. sometimes you do. I think sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. I mean, sometimes you just want to be in the flow of the game. and and roll with it, but sometimes you do. I think he, I think those two really played well off each other to make that thing work in a, in a good way. But I think, um, yeah, I, I don't think it was anything where it doesn't benefit him now to be playing all the time, you know? When did you know, at, did you know at, last, at any point last year that yeah, he's ready if we needed him to go full from start to finish? Yeah, probably, um, probably about that. Probably after the Iowa game, yeah. As you watch Chris Orr and Jack Sanborn on the other side of the ball kind of work off each other, some different personalities there. What do you see from them maybe behind the scenes as they kind of grow and kind of, kind of anchors the defense? I just see Chris being a great leader. I think he instills uh, confidence in that group. I think he shares it with Jack. And, and um, I, I think Jack steps right up and friggin' plays his butt off. So I, I, I mean, those two are friggin' pretty fun. I know you're buried in football right now, but are you aware that the California law that was signed yesterday? A little that, bit. Okay, image and likeness and that. I mean, there's some other states that are already starting to push for before 2023. Out on the recruiting trail, might that be an, a factor at all? If you're into a state and you're recruiting against teams where, hey, if you come play for us, you can make money, but if you go there, you can't. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I don't think it's probably gotten to there yet. But, I mean, they're, like Pennsylvania and Florida are talking about, California's 2023. Pennsylvania right. and Florida are talking about rushing it up like 2020. Okay. And I, I just wonder if down the road, if if it's diff if it's not the same for everybody, yeah, could it be a problem? I think any of that, you know what I mean? Um, I think any of that, and I don't know, I'm not the expert to speak on this, right? But you got to recruit. Um, I think recruiting it will. I think what it opens is a little bit of a Pandora's box, okay. right? It's like, well, I can sell the team photo here for... 10 grand, you mm -hmm. know, for each guy. You know, I can do that at this school, but I can't do it at that school. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the Pandora's box that could open up. So I don't know where it goes from there. Um, but um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But it, it will. I'm sure it will come up in recruiting eventually as these dates start to come closer. Really, for these kids, 2020 would be a pretty realistic date for them. But yeah. we want to know what's going on. Because like Gene Smith at Ohio State said today, he goes, look, he goes, you, you have to have it uniform." From one end of the country to the other, otherwise you're going to have issues. Yeah, just from just from that reason, you know, like it either is or it isn't, and then what 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 constitutes it and what mm -hmm. doesn't, and so I think there's probably a lot of parameters that still need to be figured out. When it comes to, I know we've seen a lot more maybe three wide receiver personnel or shotgun looks. So what goes into uh, maybe for the quarterbacks out of the, out of that shotgun or pistol look? What is what advantages do you see that? Depending upon opponent or whatnot, can you know? Does it give the quarterback being not under center, maybe being a little farther back? Um, it, I mean, it's just, it's just different, right? Sometimes there could be benefits. Sometimes maybe not so many benefits. But uh, one thing that it does, it makes the quarterback a little bit more of a threat 
from a uh, from a run standpoint, from a throw standpoint, immediately in in run action situations. So, I would say that's probably the biggest benefit. John, how important is the success of the early, early success of the wide receivers for the JT and the offensive goal? Um, I think it's huge. You know, I think I think the whole emphasis has been to try to be balanced and and keep stressing that and pushing towards that and. I think um, I think knowing that you got guys that can step up in different areas is big, and you got a lot of trust in those guys. What kind of growth have you seen from AJ Taylor over the years? Oh, a ton. I just saw that someone who came in that was that um, really had to play and had to play a bunch, but then just kind of grew up and has done a great job, and, and really, you know, taking on himself to get himself right, but does a great job of, of making sure the guys around him are open. You mentioned really good Seltzer and more reps. What have you seen from him in practice or uh, when he has been in that's given you some confidence in him? He just does good stuff. You know, he's got a big head and he's got a big body and he moves guys and he um, he's starting to get he's starting to get calm. You know, the one thing I see in him when you get a ton of reps, he is his play starts to diminish a little bit. You see a little bit of loss of detail. You see pad level going up, hip level going up. And that's where I think that group playing off each other is beneficial. You know, I, th- I see it in each one of them. So, uh, but I do, I see a lot of positive things out of him. I see a lot of positive things out of that group. And there's times where I go, geez, you know, like, be fun to just kind of roll and get into that. But yet I, I do think they benefit each other. You know, I don't know where at the point where kind of Cole and, and uh, and Deets played off each other, but uh, but we're, we're get we're getting closer every week.